our film is Superman, the Christopher Reeve story, um, which kind of explains a, a lot of what you need to know. Um, it's the story of the ultimate on-screen superhero who became kind of the ultimate hero in real life. We had discussed the idea of doing some sort of project at some point when the opportunity arose, but it never felt quite right. And what we decided as a family was that if we were to ever embark on a journey like this and do it the way that we would want it to be done, it would need to be at the right time with the right team. And with 2024 being the 20 year anniversary of our father's death, that felt like the right time to reintroduce him and his heroic story to the world. And as we met the folks at Passion Pictures and Misfits Entertainment and Ian and Peter and our friends at Words and Pictures, we knew we had the right team. Everything came together in a way that we knew as a family, we could be open and honest and vulnerable and hand everything over to them and see what they came back with. And that trust has been rewarded in a way that we're just so thrilled about and can't wait for the world to experience as well. It is. I mean, there are so many different parts of his personality and his passions that come through in the film. And so he was dedicated to his craft, of course, before the accident, but also after being able to return to acting and directing and showing that a disability wouldn't hold him back. So that legacy of what it is to, to care about your career and keep moving even after overwhelming obstacles is one key part of it. But the other part is his life as an advocate. So he was an activist again before the injury. And then after the injury, of course, he became known around the world for his advocacy for medical medical research uh, and for disability rights. And that work continues. The Christopher and Dana Reeve Foundation is still going strong today. There have break, been breakthroughs in research, breakthroughs in policy, and we're hugely proud of seeing all of that continue. And, and for me growing up, yeah. I, I, first of all, I loved the comic books. I used to make my dad sort of sketch um, the Superman badge so I could wear that on my... And so I, and I, I just ate the comics for breakfast, I loved them. Um, and then, you know, um, that there was that period where suddenly that you had these great iconic um, su first superhero movies, or big blockbusters, you had Star Wars, you had Raiders of the Lost Ark, and you had Superman. And Superman was the one that I, I just obviously loved because of that childhood. And then, you know, continuing through into adulthood, you, you, following the story of what happened to Christopher after his accident, um, it just felt like it was already a kind of a part of part of my life, you know. Uh, so to be given the opportunity to go behind the facts and uh, that I already knew and start to understand who this person actually was um, and get to tell his story with with Ian and with the family was, I mean, it has just been the most unique privilege. Um, just to add as well, we've never said that, but. You uh, you pointed Matt about the fact that they bear their soul on the on on the screen, and I think that's rare as well that people were so ready to go to places and to share with the world and to expose some vulner vulnerability. And I think if you want to get close to an icon and a person, you need people to accept, to share, and to let you in their own life because you know it's their legacy. Christopher lives through those uh, three lovely people. So I think that. You know, I want to point out again that the film would not have been what it is without them, the trust they give us. But as well, you know, sharing all of this, it wasn't, you know, without Matt having shot all of those, he made two films uh, about Christopher recovering and we could use that um, after the accident, we could use that footage. So there's a lot of things from those three individuals who ended up in the film, which gets you the closest possible to Christopher Reeve. And we love saying that, you know, the three of them encompasses something. You have the artistic, you have the advocacy, and you have the entertainment. And all of them, when we first met them in New York, in the restaurant, when you guys left, we were like, oh my God, Matt is the, Matt is the artist. And it was like so clear, all of them, you could merge them and get. So you get Christopher by these three individuals. Um, well, generally, all interviews make me slightly uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> um, and being a, except for this one, uh, being on, on camera and all that. Um, so besides that, um, it was, you know, I think we all agreed when we um, decided that this is something that we wanted to do, um, that we would put it all out there, that we would, we would tell his story from our perspective, we would tell our story and our experiences um, with him. And I think every one of us did that. I mean, certainly for me, the most moving 
and emotionally sort of stirring parts of the film were when Will and Alexandra are opening up in their interviews. Um, so, yeah, it, it was it, it was happy to also these guys, you know, their their style of doing interviews and, and the shoots were very, you know, uh, conducive and it was a sort of a, 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 an enjoyable experience. It wasn't sort of, you know, an un uncomfortable, gut-wrenching thing. It was, yeah, if it was you're going to bare your soul <laughs> and do public televised therapy in a way, <laughs> no better person or people to do it with than, than these two. They made the environment quite comfortable. And I think what was key for me is that by the time that I sat to tell my part of the story, I ha already had a like long-standing relationship with Ian and Peter and with the rest of the film team because we'd been building up to it. And finally we started filming and we began with our interviews and we did them separately. And something that was quite neat to find out when we saw the final cut of the film is wouldn't you know it, our stories match up. <laughs> like, <laughs> so, And boy, did we try to cut you out. <laughs> right. So we would, it, 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 we know that the, the, the experience is shared and... The out of three rich and <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think, for me, it's, it's interesting. I do this for a living. I, I speak on camera for a living, but it's about other people. It's telling other people's stories. And telling my own story is something that I... I'm keen to do if there's a purpose. I'm not here to just talk about my parents for the sake of it. I want there to be meaning behind that. And I think there is the ultimate meaning in this documentary is to tell the definitive story of these two heroes that the world could use a lot more of these days. And to share my personal experiences, as it turns out in the film, there's a, a lot of crying. Yeah, I've been through... <laughs> I've been through some hard times. I think we left all the funny bits on the, on the cutting room floor, gents, but that's okay. Um, I've had such a blessed life, we all have, despite anything we may have been through, to have had Christopher and Dana Reeve and the rest of our family and friends and support system that have lifted us up and, and set us on our path the whole way. It's... It's such a privilege and an honor to be able to tell this story and to celebrate our own experience and the experience of, of this great man. We, we, we don't actually have um, a, a buyer yet for it. Um, we wanted to, you know, we really wanted to stay in control of the film as long as possible. Um, and we already have uh, three production companies, a number of executives um, uh, involved who are all, and we, you know, it's very important to keep everybody on the same page and everyone believing in the vision behind the film, which is not just our vision. It's these three, it's, it's everyone we work with on the team. Um, and, uh, and, we just felt it was best to keep the film in our own hands for as long as possible. And uh, yeah, that's where we are now. So we'll see what happens at the end of Sundance. Hand over the mic. I think it's very important to find the right people. You know, the, the narrative out there uh, in our industry, there's, there's people, there's loads of places to, for films to happen. But, you know, he's a movie star. He's, you know, he's... he's it's a big IP, it's a big character. We try to do justice visually, the music from Ilan Eshkeri, the, 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 the great work from Passion Pictures, um, CGI. Um, everything is really, you know, you mentioned McQueen before and Rising Phoenix. That's, you know, we try to move to make cinema. We use the, the tools of documentary filmmaking, but for us, it's a cinema experience. There's the there's the clue in it, cinema. So uh, these, you know, the, the three of you, we, we talk about it. There's, we need to do justice to this story. And I think, you know, we'll work with the people we are ready to make justice with this story. Yeah.